All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to use a speed pot and compare the speeds. And then if, if a speed changes, then we're gonna use a dynamic speed, can cha speed change for a servo so that we can actually control the speed. Now you see it actually running in the video right now. So let's go ahead and go over this right now. And I'll go ahead, it's really, really simple controls. I just wanna show you how to actually do this in a one way to possibly, you know, actually go ahead and change the speed. Now, the, uh, granted, this is going to be a, you know, one case scenario. There's probably a thousand ways to do this. I teach this actually four different ways in my servo course. I just wanted to show you one way to actually do this through a YouTube video. So let's go ahead and get straight to it. All right, so first and foremost, let, we're gonna go ahead and stop it. Okay, so we've stopped our servo. We're gonna lower the speed pot all the way down. Okay, so what we've done is basically we've come in here and we had, we've tied in our trainer module, right? Where our trainer that we have, we tied in the first switch, which is uh, the uh, DIO, which is the very first switch over here in the um, first trainer input, right? So what we've done is we've done that and we've cut our servo on immediately. Then we're gonna cut the button light on. Really, really, really simple, right? So then we're coming in and we're gonna push the second button, which is gonna be DI1, which is we're calling servo jog. And again, this relates back to this card right here. Now that's gonna immediately cut on the servo jog. Really, really, really simple controls where you're just using a uh, trapezoid nothing fancy and then again we're cutting the button light on just to show that we did do that now we in the very next rung what we're doing is we're using a um, not equal to symbol and we're saying okay so if if the speed pot is not equal to the speed compare then we are going to actually change the we're going to use a motion dynamic right um, so the motion change dynamic is basically what we're going to do. And I, I actually put in a compute here. And now, now all this compute is doing is merely uh, saying that um, I added this because of the simple fact of I have a 110 system running a 480 volt motor, right? So basically the whole control system that I have is a, a kinetic 6000 and it is a 480 volt and the motor is a 40 volt now i'm running it off 110 and i set that up prior to you know in an old um an older video that i did uh, in my course to show you exactly how i did that right you can run these in demo that's it's basically in in sort of a if you would a demo mode but everything is derated so with that said i put the speed pot i, I basically you know divided it by three real quick and like a compute and then loaded the compute as they speed in here. So I'm changing the speed of the servo motor based upon the actual, you know, speed reference, right? So the speed reference is basically coming off of the speed pot. Now, I don't actually look at any of this until the motor is in a drive, right? Is in in the actual motion of the uh, servo. Now I could have like, could have looked at many different things. I could have come in here and, and looked at, uh, I could have, let's just paste this in here. I could actually came in here and looked at, um, let's look at our servo um, and come in here and look at our servo and we'll, we can look at something like, uh, you know, servo, servo action status, make sure it's, it's on. You know, that's a good, that's another in key indicator that you can use. Um, but again, all I did was make sure that the servo was actually running it was an IP in progress up here, right? So I use this over here and cut it on. Now, um, very simply, I just put in another uh, another button to stop it. Um, for that matter, I didn't necessarily cut it off or cut it on, right? Now I can do that, but again, there's no, no real sense of that. So the servo is actually on. We'll actually see this and watch this process in effect right now. Okay. So it's running right now. As you see, it's running really, really, really slow because it's running off the speed pot, not the MAJ, not not the, the motion axis jog, right? So it's kind of ignoring the motion axis jog because again, we're overriding it with the motion change dynamic, right? 
So that's what we're doing right here. And you can see the change speed is so minute, you can barely see it moving. Now I'm going to slowly adjust the speed pot. Now you see, as I adjust the speed pot, the servo is going to speed up. You see that? I mean, I can keep speeding up as long as I want to. Then if I don't touch it anymore, it's just going to stay at that speed. It's not going to go anywhere, right? So it's going to stay there. It's not going to go anywhere else. But if I were to take it down, see, it will go down. If I were to take it up, it would go up, right? You can kind of see, as you see the enable, you see the enable of this actually taking place. Now, the key thing, too, is, is really what should take place here is you can actually come in here and look at this doing this right here. So in this, I'm actually coming in here looking at the speed pot and I have a compare right here. Now this compare is a real. So the speed pot is a real because obviously it's an, it's an input, it's an analog input zero to 10 and it's scaled a certain way, right? So it's an analog input right here, the trainer analog input. I'm using channel three. And again, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm comparing that against a real value. And what I'm doing is I'm loading that value. I'm just loading the speed pot in again once these parameters are taking place, right? So now it's looking for the, the EN, which is the enable of that motion change dynamic, right? So if it changes, just like that, okay? Changes just like that moves it in there nice and easy real subtle so what i don't want you to do is get a, a good understanding of this these two things right here are the way to start a servo this is an this is a an example of one way to control speeds right um i you know generally you're not controlling the servo speed off of speed pot but again this is a trainer scenario so what we're doing is we're showing you how to actually utilize that and actually grow from that right now see this see this kind of blips a little bit we're seeing that every when it changes a little bit is changing based upon that card reading that speed pot right so even if we took it up full blast you can see it's only going to run that fast right so you can see this does work you can see everything it can completely controls the speed. I can take it all the way back down to where it's barely moving, right? Barely moving. You can see it's barely moving, but it's controlling itself per precisely based upon what I have done right here on this very speed pot, right? So you can see the speed pot. You can see everything. You can actually see the needle move right here if you actually look close enough. You can see the whole thing working and the controls working properly. Now I want to make a little short little video, you know, showing how you can actually do this, right? Now, why do I do this? Why do I make videos like this, right? It's to educate you, it's to show you how automation can be effective and how important it is to know little subtle things like this. Uh, granted, this is not exactly the best practice, I would say. There's a, a again, I, I teach the, the full servo curriculum and in, in servo motion mastery and servo mesh advanced mesh motion I servo advanced motion mastery so I have two courses that teaches the full curriculum on how to do things right which you would I mean people have absolutely loved so um, if you are interested in those courses the courses will be linked below but again when it comes down to it I just wanted to show you for the people that don't have the ability to take the courses and don't have the option to and they just want a quick little video on, on maybe see you know how to use a, a a motion change dynamic or for the case of you know using a speed pot with a servo or something like that then this is a video that would give you an idea and a topic of how to do that right so we're trying to you know help everybody show that automation is the future and, and the more you learn the more you grow and the better you are like I said, if you can program it, you can troubleshoot it. The better you are at what you do, the better you can better have, you know, your career, your, you know, your way of life and things can get, get better for you all around, right? Even if it's just eliminating a headache that you may have one day. But again, I appreciate your time and I appreciate you watching the video and we'll see you guys on the next one.